Kennedy, how you doing? All right, so I've got your work up here, and I'll, I'll, let's go ahead and go through it. This I'll give you my take on what I'm I'm going to see. I think it's a good start, but there's a lot of things I think we can do to improve it. So give me a few minutes here. I think my comments are going to make really really good sense to you. I'm glad you picked this one with the lawnmower with the goat. I love it. I think it's a blast. I love this frame right here. So anyway, so what do we have and where where are we and where do we need to be? All right, so let me see how I see this. So we've got the setup here. So this is introducing the setting and the main, kind of the main player, which, well, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, that would definitely be the, the main player. So you've got the girl mowing the lawn. You've got the setting. That's excellent. Then you show a little close-up of the lawnmower with a face on a lawnmower because the lawnmower is about to get sick. Maybe a couple of puffs of smoke here just to reinforce that this lawnmower is about to, to uh, breathe its last breath, so to speak, right? So a little couple, couple puffs of smoke. Then all of a sudden we go to bam. Now, don't forget, we can't use any words at all. So this is, we can't use the word bam. We can't use the word need a hoof. Yes, can't use those, right? So maybe figure out just maybe how to show this thing blowing up, right? I'm not so sure if we need this frame right here, okay? Because we already know the lawnmower blew up. So this is kind of seems a little redundant that we have the girl and we have the things um, kind of bouncing around that they're after the lawnmower blew, right? If you want to include it, that's great, but I, I don't think it's necessary. Um, it's a, I think it's a fun frame because you know our clothes got all torn up and our hair got all messed up, but from the 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 the, the uh, uh, unfortunate demise of the lawnmower, right? So that's kind of interesting. But then from here to here, we take a huge jump. All right, and think of this as a narrative. Think of it as as a storytelling. So all of a sudden, from here, we we get in this setting where we have this girl mowing her lawn, and then all of a sudden, the lawnmower blows, and out of nowhere appears a goat. Right, and that's the part I think is is a, that's a little problematic. My recommendation is this: on your setup scene, maybe in the background over here, you could have a fence back off in the distance where she's got her goats. So her goats are back there. And so we want to introduce this as just as, so as a way that it just doesn't kind of appear out of nowhere. All right, so we've got this this kind of background where she's got a pen and has a couple of goats, or maybe even the goats just back there in the distance grazing or something, right? We want to, we want the viewer to know that there is a goat involved in here somewhere instead of just springing it on a viewer like all of a sudden this goat appears, right? So we want to make a connection from her solution, from her problem to her solution, in, in by introducing the solution a little bit earlier in, in the narrative, right? So at this point, what I would say is she's like this, all right? And this is the part where you're going to have to you really think about introducing this aha moment where she's like this. All of a sudden, she, she, her lawnmower's no more. Right, so she gives this look like this, like, what am I gonna do now, right? And then so you have her maybe looking around and then all of a sudden she looks at the goat and then she has the, aha, I know what I can do. Okay, so again, you're drawing a transition between this frame and this frame after already introducing the goat in the first frame, right? So now she says, aha, so she goes to get the goat, right? She, she, she kind of suits the goat up, you know, and, and, and then she starts in with her mowing a lot. Right now, I think at this point, somehow in one of these frames, like this frame here, we have to show her maybe leading the goat back to the area where she wants to continue mowing the lawn. Right, so so maybe she's got this, this aha moment. Oh, wait a second, I have a goat. So she walks over and then she grabs the goat. You see her walking, maybe with a rope around the goat's neck, walking the goat back to the original setting where she turns around, grabs him by the legs picks up his rear legs and continues to mow the lawn, okay? The next thing I want to say is that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames. I think 12 is a great number, at least 10. I'd say at least 10, but probably no more than 12. And more than 12, you have you risk losing the viewer. Um, any less than 10, you risk a incomplete narrative, all right? So those are my recommendations. My last recommendation is this. I don't really, right now, this is kind of tough because we don't know if we're supposed to go from here to here or from here to here. You see what I'm saying? So we don't know whether to go across or down. And that could be problematic, definitely. Um, and also, I think that creating frames, I'm not so sure if that's the best way to go. I think an organic relationship without boxing the individual frames, I think is a really interesting premise and I you know that was shown in the example 
uh, let me jump to the example that I've been using. I think it was in the begin. So let's just jump right over here. We'll go to week five. And I think it was in the begin. Common day every week four begin. This is what I'm after, right? Oh, this is it right here. This is kind of shows this organic. So instead of boxing off and having just little kind of frames for each of the um, uh, the frames associated with the story, we kind of assemble them more in an organic way. This one's the same thing. So notice each one of these is boxed off, creating a degree of separation from each individual frame and its, its uh, overall composition. So my recommendation is to break the frames and kind of create this organic relationship. Now, one thing you'll have to do is you'll have to kind of indicate where to go from the frame. So this one does a really cool job in using kind of some hair from his beard to, to, to connect the path. This one's interesting. It used the flight of the bee or the wasp to connect the path, right? So what could we do with yours? We could maybe use grass clippings to just kind of connect the trail. All right, I don't know if you want to do it in a, in a circle or if you want to do it in something else, but maybe use grass blades to connect the trail. Um, maybe use the goat sunglasses. I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out there, but think of a really cool, neat, compelling way and fun way to connect the the uh, the frames in, in an organic manner. Okay. All right. Great job. Thank you very much. Of course, if you have any questions at all, please let me know, Kennedy. I'll be glad to make any necessary clarifications. Great start. Thank you very much for sharing.